This is Twit. George, this one I'm going to send out to you. DLR, who's on the chat quite often, and I were discussing about crystals since Gordo had said, I've got some crystals for you. Um, can you tell us the correlation between crystals and ham radio or perhaps crystals and frequencies, George? Well, uh, that'd be kind of kind of long to do the whole thing. But in a nutshell, they take a tiny sliver of a crystal, uh, usually just a little flat piece, and, you know, crystals naturally vibrate or oscillate. And you can trim them uh, to make them change frequencies. So the size of it changes the frequency of it. And that's how they use to uh, adjust the uh, precision frequencies on a uh, receiver or a transmitter is through crystals. Now, we don't see them as much anymore in the newer rigs, but all the older rigs use them. To, uh, to have a good stable frequency. Bob, is there anything you can add to that? Absolutely. Uh, here I have, um, here's one on uh, 3885, and here's one on 7260, and uh, this one's on 70, 7195. And uh, I, let's see, can, let me get out of the way here. You see that little yellow guy back there? Well, um, I don't know if the microphone's long enough here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Let's see. I think I can show you. There are slots in here that you plug the crystal into. Okay, hey, plug the crystal right into the slot. Yep. Yep. There's a place for six of them in that old concert, and that's how we select the frequency. Today, we do it by turning a dial. The VFO operates. This crystal is at... Uh, 5.8 megacycles and this VFO would be tuned to 5.8 so instead of just being on one frequency we can move around then the technology moved up and it's transceive so the receiver and the transmitter follow that same VFO and so could you see that okay George oh yeah we, we saw it good and by the way Don and I saw some Gonset communicators at the Hamfest this past weekend, and I almost bought one, and then I saw that crystal slot, and I said, no, you know, I really don't want to get into crystal collecting right now. And, you know, they used to call oh, those little crystal radios, uh, they used to call the, the ones that were totally crystal uh, controlled, they used to call those rock bound because you couldn't move off those frequencies, especially the old, the CW uh, uh, transmitters and, and receivers back then, you know, that people started off with the novices years and years and years ago. They were, they were rock bound to that frequency because there was no tuning knob. You just, you change frequency by changing crystals, right, Bob? I think I showed this one time on the show. There's three little screws in there. Mm -hmm. You take those screws... And, and the plate comes off, and there'll be this little sliver of uh, of crystal. And if you want to raise the frequency, you get out toothpaste and a toothbrush, and you just uh, move the old toothbrush up and down on the uh, uh, on the crystal sliver, and you can raise the frequency. If you want to lower it, you take a lead pencil and put some lead on it, it, it and then that's how we do it. Yeah, you can't change them very much. But uh, that's how we moved around. But basically, you today, uh, what, do you, what do we do with all this old gear? We call International Crystal Company in Oklahoma. They're still in business, and they still make thousands of crystals for all kinds of stuff. Call ICM, International Crystal Manufacturing. It's a fabulous place. I think we did a tour of that here a couple of years ago. Ray and I were there. But anyway, you can still get crystals. So that should answer it for you, Amanda. It does. Thank you so much. And by the way, I have a bill from them because we just had some crystals grown. I guess that's what you call it. Um, for a certain local repeater here, we had to change the frequency. So we had to order two sets for uh, the transmit and the receive frequencies. So it's kind of cool, though. You grow crystals for frequency. Interesting stuff there.